really any given night, you know, depending on the night, you know, somebody could be beat, whether that's sure. the best team at the top or where it's the team at the bottom. What's up, EuroLeague fans? Welcome back to another episode of A Quarter with Kyle Hyde. Today, we have a very special guest, um, you know, a veteran in the basketball world, but kind of, I guess you can say, uh, a true beginner or, or almost a rookie um, in EuroLeague. Um, that's from Olympiacos, Isaiah Cannon. Isaiah, what's up, man? How's everything? Man, what's up, Kyle, man? I appreciate you having me, uh, having me on and uh, really looking forward to it. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you taking the time. Now, first off, man, like I said, I mean, you, you're you a veteran. You know, you're a veteran, you know, has been in the, the NBA, um, you know, for, for some years. Um, but, you know, this is, you know, last year, your, your season kind of got caught, uh, cut in half a little bit, um, your first year of league season. So now this will be your, your first full EuroLeague season. So, you know, what is your early impression about EuroLeague as a whole? Uh, you know, this is definitely, you know, the second best league, you know, now that I'm a part of it. And uh, um, it's a lot of great, you know, a lot of great talent over here. A lot of guys that I knew before and a lot of guys that I'm just now, you know, finding out about. And um, it's a good league, you know, very competitive. And um, it's a lot of great teams. You know, last year would have been, you know, my first uh, season in Euro League. You know, I was learning a lot of guys, running a lot of teams. Um, you know, first full season this year, you know, the war happened last year to where it got cut short. And this would be my first full season here. And, um, you know, this year, you know, Euro League did a great job of building a lot of good teams. You know, it's a lot of good teams out there this season. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, at any really any given night, you know, depending on the night, you know, somebody can be beat, whether that's sure. the best team at the top or where it's the team at the bottom, you know, it's every night, you know, if you don't come, you know, with the right mindset, you know, you can be beat. Then um, that just goes to show how good this league is. Yeah. That's my favorite part too. The competitiveness, like you said, every game matters. That's what, you know, your league says, um, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, you can you know, play one night, where, you know, you're playing the top team where you're not one night, you're playing the bottom team, you know, and still you got to live the same type of, uh, passion, the same type of thing, they have the same type of focus. Yep, yep, for sure, for sure. Now, how how have you now, now? Many players, you know, that come from abroad and have spent you know multiple years in the NBA, you know, usually struggle their first years out, uh, you know, coming overseas. But you, you know, playing in Euroleague, I mean, you have fared quite well. You know, you've been one of the go-to players out last year when you were at Unix, and now this year, you know, playing with Olympiacos. So, what has the adjustment been like for you on the court? Uh, you know, on the court is, uh, I mean, I had my share of, you know, ups and downs too. Um, you know, just learning the spacing of this, yeah. um, you know, Euro league compared to the NBA. Um, you know, it's not, not as much, you know, ISO basketball, you know, depending on the team that you want. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's very systematic, you know, I feel like, uh, every team has a system and, mm -hmm. you know, every, every team as a whole try to build their team, you know, based off that system and try to get their, those type of players. And um, my competitiveness really is kind of got me over that, that, you know, phase of struggling and going through those type of things. You know, I just try to, you know, just go out there and play, you yeah. know, the way that I knew how to play. And, um, you know, I've been fortunate to have, you know, my first year with a coach that allowed me to play through my mistakes to where I can learn, you know, I can learn a lot faster than, you know, just sitting, sitting and watching. And, um, you know, that kind of helped me, you know, kind of jump the curve and speed up my process of learning, um, the yearly game compared to, you know, the NBA game, you know, I still learn every game is a learning experience for me. You know, it's, um, a lot of teams that I haven't got a chance to play against. And, you know, it's a lot of countries that I haven't been, been to either. And, you know, every game is a learning curve for me, and I just try to, you know, learn from my teammates too. You know, I ask questions um, yeah. because I am on a, you know, I am on a court a lot. You know, in moments where it matters, and um, I just try to ask. You know, even even if I don't know, I'm not afraid to, you know, just ask a question. You know, and that yeah. that kind of has uh, helped me along the way, and um, I've been blessed to be able to be in good, you know, teams, good situations to to kind of, you know, help as well. Definitely, definitely. Now, I, I played for Olympiacos for two years, many, many, many years ago, many, many years ago. <laughs> um, but no, G, yeah, for sure, no, G. <laughs> fact, fact. But I understand how special that place is. I understand how special that culture is. 
So, you know, tell me or tell the audience more about like the Olympiaco culture. You know, everybody sees like the pregame for you guys come in and, you know, you guys are jumping around or just like the, the atmosphere in the locker room. Like, you know, guys really, you know, really respect or really enjoy um, being there, really enjoy each other. So talk about like that special culture that, you know, that that is Olympiaco basketball. And it's, uh, you know, as you said, you, you was here a few years ago and, um, you know, the tradition and the passion that these, you know, I could just start with the fans, you know, the fans, you know, they really support their team. You know, they're really engaged in the team. You know, they um, they follow every single thing that the team does, you know, and that carries over to the um, core for us in the organization. You know, they try to, you know, want to be one of the best, you know, teams every year. You know, they want to compete and try to win EuroLeague championships every, you know, every year that they can. And, um, you know, that just builds a, a culture of, you know, good basketball, good basketball tradition. Um, you know, playing the right way, you know, building the team, you know, based off of good characters, um, you know, passionate players. And, um, that, you know, that kind of motivates us, you know, each game that we, you know, got this, um, all these people, all these, you know, uh, fans behind us, you know, that want to feel well, that want to see us go out there and compete and play at a high level, you know, and they let us know when we're not, you know, we're not. That's bad. (laughs) So <laughs> we're not, you know, doing doing our sure. best, you know, not, you know, not at least showing that we're fighting. You know, they let us know, and uh, it's a different style of basketball too. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's not your ordinary, you know, style of basketball where you just, you know, I could just use certies for example, where you have, you know, some games, a lot of Americans out there on the court at one time. You know, this yeah. this team ain't really, you know, based off of that. You know, they use. And try to utilize, you know, the whole team and the best of everybody. You know, everybody gets some type of a share on this team. Now, I want to talk about off the court before we uh, wrap up again. So, our quick tip questions. Um, right. But I live in Athens, Greece, and I mean, it's probably one of the you know best cities to live in the world. Um, has closest to Lucas or Pop, and they take you around to get some soufaki or some soccer <laughs> or so. You know, so how's your Greek culture, man? How are you live? Uh, how are you enjoying living in Greece so far? Man, you know what the the weather here is amazing. You know, I stick yeah. to walk outside, you know, some days and have on shorts and shirt, short sleeve shirt, you know. So uh, coming from Russia, you know, that was the biggest, yeah. <laughs> biggest adjustment, you know, off the court for me that I, that I liked. And uh, Slugas and Pop, you know, them guys told me a lot about um, about those type of traditional foods that you can go go get. Um, but, we, you know, we all, they all got families and everything, you know, we yeah. so busy. Throughout the year, we haven't just, uh, you know, single handedly went and sat down and at some of those places. But I heard a lot about them. And, you know, I'm still learning, learning this city as as the season is going on. But um, those those two dishes that you just said, you know, that's a big, big time uh, Greek uh, style food that, um, you know, is very good. I had to get on my guys, man. I'm about to get on pop, man. I'm about to fall out like this. <laughs> so you got do we'll take my man Isaiah to get some soup or something. Man, the girl, I'm gonna get some. Oh, no, <laughs> and they definitely out on some of the spots, but they definitely have told me about a lot of good spots that I went yeah. to, uh, especially down in Lafada where I stay at. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of great restaurants uh, down this way, and um, I'm a big person of the sea, and um, you know, I live there close to the sea, and that's that's the best. Like, be waking up to the morning. Every, <laughs> so it's definitely yeah. definitely a good city. Um, you know, I've only been been able to be in a couple cities in Europe, and um, this is you know by far one of the best best ones outside of Istanbul, and uh, you know, Kazan wasn't a bad city as well. You know, that was yeah. just just as cold as I, as, yeah. as I was up there, but you know, a lot of a people. It's, yeah, it's definitely definitely different up there in Russia, but I had a good time. Now we're gonna get into our clutch time quick uh, questions. Um, so I got a couple questions for you. What is your go-to pregame song? Uh, go-to pregame song right now is um, I have a little bit of NBA Youngboy and uh, that that new Drake album. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'll re- I'll repeat. <laughs> okay, okay. What is your go-to pregame meal? Uh, go-to pregame meal is is what the team gives us. There's no, right. there's nothing around it. <laughs> so it got to be a pasta and some some salads. I already know, I already know. The <laughs> I know he he messing around. So. <laughs> I know he's very. <laughs> I already. <know. laughs> 
what is what is something that is it something that you keep in your locker that's special to you? Uh, you know, I just um for the most part I just keep my family, you know. Uh before I go out, uh before every game, you know, I pray, make sure my family is in good health. Um, pray that my team, you know, and myself go out and play as hard, as tough as we can and um come out with no injuries. And um, you know, I just say a quick prayer before I go out there, you know, making sure my family and um, making sure everybody I'm going to war with is 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 protected. That's why I fall support. And the last question: I know your your elite career has been short, but I mean you've already had you know a bunch of highlights. So so far in your elite career, what has been your your favorite highlight that you that you've done? Uh, my favorite highlight, uh, <laughs> and you may laugh, but uh, I'm sure everybody know about this one. It was um, you know in Barcelona. You know, my, that was that probably was my biggest. You know, as far as outside of scoring, you know, just uh -huh. you know, just the impact on the game to where like, uh -huh. like oh, you know, everybody, you know. So, um, and I mean, we lost that game, but you know, if I could go back, I would never change. You know, yeah. things I did, and um, you know, I play with that that type of passion as well, and um, those those type of things. When the fans are involved, you know, those are the type of things give me. Get me motivated to play, and uh, it's never nothing personal. It's all just just about the game for me. So that'll probably be my our biggest yeah. highlight. It's all part of the sport, man. Well, I, I appreciate you stepping in the corner with me, um, taking the time, man. Uh, you know, I wish you best of luck. You know, throughout the rest of the year of the season, I um, wish you call for your family health, um, and I'm sure we'll be seeing each other very soon. No, nah, for sure. You too. I uh, wish y'all all the best, and um, we're about to come up there soon. We should grab dinner for sure. Yeah, but definitely, definitely, man. I'll show you around Milan. Yeah. Thank you, Euroleague fans, for checking out A Quarter with Kyle Hines. Check out very soon for more episodes coming very soon. Thank you.